Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris. Today we're going to be talking about Lewis symbols, which are a way to tell you quickly how many valence electrons an atom has. Recall that valence electrons are really important for determining an element's properties. And so that's why we want to use these Lewis symbols. So first I'm going to tell you a little bit about more about why they're important, and then I'm going to show you how to draw a bunch of Lewis symbols. So first, why are they important? Well, let's pretend that this set of rings here represents a carbon atom. Inside we got the nucleus and then two rings where we can place electrons. Carbon has six electrons. That's its atomic number, six protons, and a neutral carbon, you'd have six electrons. And that means we can fill them in on this rings. And it turns out just two go on the inside, and then there's four left, and those go on the outer ring. And those outer ones we call valence electrons. And because they're on the outside, they participate in bonding, they interact with atoms around them, and that makes the valence electrons really important. Another important thing to know is that atoms tend to want eight valence electrons, and we call that an octet. So because there's a tendency to get an octet, an eight total valence electrons, and because the valence electrons are on the outside, they play a really important role in determining the properties of atoms. For example, carbon has four valence electrons. To get an octet, it needs four more. And so carbon tends to form four covalent bonds, each one giving it an extra electron. And that's why carbon forms four bonds. On the other hand, if you take an atom like fluorine, it turns out to have seven valence electrons. It'll tend to gain one extra electron to give it an octet and form a negative one ion. So we can understand both why carbon wants to have four bonds and why fluorine becomes a negative one ion because we thought about the number of valence electrons. So Lewis symbols are just a quick way to express how many valence electrons we have. So take carbon, for example. We know it has four valence electrons. We just drew that up above. And so the Lewis symbol will just have four dots around it. And that's saying, hey, there's four valence electrons here. And this is going to be really important when you go to build up to Lewis structures, which show molecules with sticks and dots and letters, as opposed to just an atom. All right, now let's draw a bunch of Lewis symbols. So how do you do it? First, you count up the valence electrons. And then you just add them counterclockwise around the element symbol. First you add one electron on each side, then you add two after that. How do you determine the number of valence electrons? Well, it turns out it's really easy to do with the periodic table. So you can draw the electron configuration if you want, and you may have learned to do it that way, and that's fine. But it's very easy by the position on the periodic table to say how many valence electrons an atom has. So for example, lithium is the first box, and it has one valence electron. Beryllium is the second box, and it has two. Then boron has three, carbon has four, ni nitrogen five, oxygen six, fluorine seven, and neon eight. So you just count how many boxes over it is from the left, and that's actually equal to its valence electrons. The only exception here is we want to skip the D block when we're down here. So that means if I was looking at, say, uh, arsenic, I would say it has one, two, three, four five valence electrons. I'm skipping that D block. And you'd similarly skip the F block. So we can count the valence electrons and then we add them around the symbol. All right, let's go ahead and do lithium. We know lithium, because it's the first box here, has just one valence electron. We always start on the right-hand side as if we were writing from left to right. We've just written the elemental symbol and now we'll write our first electron. Then we see boron is our next example and it's the third box over. We have lithium, beryllium, then boron. So that means it has three valence electrons. So we go one, two, three. Again, starting on the right, going counterclockwise around the atom. Nitrogen is the fifth box over, so it has five valence electrons. So we'd go one, two, three, four, and now I'm all the way back around and I'm just going to make it a, a, a set of two electrons called a lone pair. Neon is the last box over here, and if we counted all the way over, we'd see that there's eight boxes to get to neon. It's also a noble gas, so we shouldn't be surprised it has an octet already. And so I'm going to go ahead and draw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, the cool thing about these Lewis symbols, if you can call it that, if you're a chemist, you think it's cool. If you're a normal person, well, are you still watching the video, normal person? Or have you given up? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> if you're a lame chemist such as myself, it's cool because these are periodic properties. That is, they repeat over and over again based on the periodic table. So for sodium, we notice it's right below lithium. Sodium has one valence electron, and it'll look exactly like lithium. Aluminum is right below boron, and it has three valence electrons. It'll look exactly like boron. So 
Then we come to sulfur and we see, oh, hey, sulfur falls down here, not below nitrogen. And so that means that it doesn't follow the exact same pattern as nitrogen, but it does follow the exact same pattern as oxygen. And it has six valence electrons, so we'd add them one, two, three, four, five, six. Then lastly, argon, which is directly below neon, and it's going to have the eight electrons. An octet. A full octet, so the noble gases don't tend to react. Okay, last Lewis symbol to note is helium. And it's actually an exception because remember when we drew carbon, we said two electrons can go in that inner ring. And helium is two over and its inner ring is, is full. And it turns out when you're just looking at that inner ring, you don't want an octet, but you want to double it. You want those rings to be full basically. And so for helium, you want that to be a doublet. And so we're just going to have two electrons on helium. So that is how we draw our Lewis symbols. So go ahead and click subscribe if you enjoyed this video and like to see future ones or ask any questions below. Thanks for watching.